Good evening and welcome again to another Tilda live stream. Today we are working on the back end again and here you have a view of my terminal currently. So uh, last time, last last workshop we have we have uh, learned how to install Freenet, how to actually set up the project, how how to actually you Okay, how to use uh, how to use Freenet to to get our base files, to get everything we need to start working. Today we are gonna take a look a little bit of uh, how how we actually create some new endpoints, how we actually how how we create some 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 functionality actually that we need. Uh, we are gonna start using. Uh, we are gonna start creating a, a blog basically. So we we used we created the blog when we had our workshop in Serbian. Now we're gonna do the same in English. Uh, I was thinking whether we should do something different, maybe for for English workshop, but I decided to stay with the blog point because I think it has it has nice nice features we can implement and actually show. Uh, show those features, show, show what Freenet can do and actually what Flask can do. So that's that's why are we sticking with the blog now. So I have created, I have uh, given myself liberty to to create a new new project. As you can see, we have the first project we play, created last week. We are gonna delete that only only for the name basically there's no there's no other there is no other reason i have named this one the first blog and every every code that we do on these workshops will will be available at this link here i'm gonna paste it in the in the chat just in case if anyone needs it so uh this in on this link here we will have all the code for the for the tutorial we are going to do so it will be accessible it will be public everyone can can use it can fork it can edit it or similar stuff so after after every week i'm gonna push the changes we do onto the onto the repository and you will be able to see by by commits every week that how how we advance through through our through our project because uh at the beginning stage we are gonna skip over some stuff we are gonna uh pretend we don't know some stuff actually i'm gonna pretend i don't know some stuff so at further down the line it will be easier for you to understand just just so we don't jump through everything and you get all confused we are gonna go step by step week by week and actually implement feature by feature and explain it one by one so yeah that's that is that is what 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 will happen github public and we currently have our repo we have all the files you 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 have seen pa past week and I've added some new files. We will gonna we are gonna take a look uh, now what they do, what what I have actually done. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, where do we start? Our idea. Okay, let's start with with let's first start the project. So I believe that's that's what we need. We are gonna run bin init and bin devil from our root root uh, folder and yeah bin in it bin devil run it let it do its thing if you want you can take a look at those scripts if, if you're interested how they work but yeah and basically we have something like this let's refresh it just to make sure it works we've looked at swagger last week we've looked at how to use it and Today we are gonna add something new here. We are gonna see how how that actually works. So that's that's the plan for today. 
uh, I'm gonna minimize this window because this is just our our uh, our code here our project running if we need it we are gonna we are gonna put it back for now our project is running in the background and it has auto reload so whenever we change something in the code it will automatically reload and when we save the file and just a refresh on the swagger will we will be able to see our changes and to test them okay so main folder you're gonna be editing is called the same as your project so we're gonna go inside I believe we, we took a look last week also what's in here and today we are gonna make some edits of course that's the point of programming so yeah let's see we have three important directories one is API one is models and one is schemas API is our API uh, what what is actually API programming for for someone who's unfamiliar uh, because our application has has front-end and back-end which communicate somehow and the API is the listener of the back-end so it's basically just just a, a window where on one side we have our back-end it's like McDonald's server working on the drive-through and we come as a front-end to, to the to that drive-through and the window where we actually speak our order is basically API uh, that's that's how I imagined it maybe maybe it makes no sense to someone else uh, why is like that well API is just an endpoint just a window where uh, it knows it's what what he needs to get and what to do with it and to give you back something basically it knows your order it will prepare it in the back end inside the building and it will give you your order back it will give you your sandwich or whatever and i i don't know maybe maybe this analogy is 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 pointless for someone i i found it quite useful for for someone who is new so that's that's why i'm i'm telling it but yeah we will it will be more understandable once once we actually start writing something for now, as you see here, this paths are actually API endpoints that we send a request and send it in specific uh, format. In in se we send specific parameters, so API knows what to do with with those and actually return something to us. So if we go here, try it out. We see you. We are using JSON to communicate. And we are sending email and the password. I'm sorry. We are sending email and the password. Uh, now, what will happen in the back end? We will take that email and the password. We will we will see if their user exists in the database. If password is correct or something. And if that is true, we will return some session cookie. We will tell okay, you can log in. Now, when you go a little not down, okay. Let's let's try and log in first. So we mentioned this last week. The default user that will exist whenever you start Freenet is admin at example .com, and this is the password. I'm not sure if this needs to be bigger. Okay, I guess. Just, just so you can read it, I'm gonna restore it now. We will, we will see on the video whether whether this is readable or not. If not, next time I will, I will have some bigger font. So yeah, once I hit execute, basically what he, we have done is sent a request to this endpoint and to this API. Post the request. We will talk about it a little bit later. And we have. Here, a curl command that does the same thing as we have done only in command line. But what we have done, we have sent post request to this endpoint with these parameters, and 
the backend knows, expects username and actually email and password and knows what to do with them, does something and returns here, Re returns uh, this is body, we have headers, returns something with status code 200, we are logged in basically. So yeah, that's it. That's that's what are we gonna do, no, but not with login. We are gonna create something different, so we can we can dive into creating APIs that we actually need. Today, probably not probably today, we won't have any functionality uh, for our blog because we need a little more more diving into. We are just gonna create a new API that we're gonna improve in the future. For now, it's just gonna show up here and do nothing basically except return return some some nothingness i guess <laughs> okay so that's the api part uh let's the models part we are gonna talk ab talk about it a lot more in the future it's quite important part okay maybe maybe not the best file yeah we, we we will we will see an implementation in the future now now there's no there's no point uh what model does is uh it uses uh it communic it's our communication with the database i will talk about it more in the future but for now it's just a way for us to store something in the database and retrieve it back there's no need for you to to at this point of, of our workshop worry about that too much it will probably happen in next week or the week after that we're gonna talk a lot more about about database about migration how how we actually store something how we create new tables and stuff like that so I'm gonna skip over that part now and now we have schemas what schemas do is as you know we are communicating as uh, we are communicating front end to back end and back end to front end and we need to have some set of rules on how we actually want to communicate we need to have uh, our back end needs to know what to expect uh, our front end needs to know what to actually send and schemas is like like a frame on what data we actually need to, to work with and when we take a look at no no okay the let's we will see how that actually looks in our in our blog.py which we will I will talk about this a little later but for now what schema does if you take a look here uh, this part that swagger knows what we actually need to send without guessing or without having some documentation that is uh, as you see schema uh, usually when we don't use swagger we when we create new endpoint, we need to create some sort of either documentation or good communication between between programmers to actually know, hey, I need this data, or yeah, basically I need this data to be sent to actually, and I will give you this data back in this format. If we don't do that, uh, I mean, there's there's ways to figure it out, but there's no that's that's a waste of time and that's not the part of this workshop so yes we, we are gonna be using schemas to actually format the data we are sending and uh, so that front-end can understand us and so front-end can send us data that back-end can understand because we we get that data mapped into some object or something that we can actually use inside the Python now what we have here if we go inside the API okay uh, yeah let's let's start from here if we go inside the API I have created a file known uh, 
named block.py. For now, it's quite empty. We have some basic uh, basic includes that we are gonna use. Uh, now, what this method view does, there is two implementations inside Freenet and also Flask. Uh, one is method view, which basically basically what it does, it tells us okay, anyone who who uses this this API does doesn't need to be logged in. It, we can just trigger it, he can just send the right data and use it. And there is also Freenet implementation that is protected method view. We will look at it in the future, for now I'm just talking about it. Uh, which basically says, okay, before, uh, before uh, sending a request, we, you, we need to check whether that user is logged in actually whether that session is logged in before I I return anything. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I believe in here we have we have some some uh, APIs that need need uh, that that use protected method view. Actually I remember last week I used one which I don't remember which one but yeah you can you can take a look on last week's video how that actually works how what what's the actual actual implementation or you can wait a few weeks and we will actually show it what's the implementation of using protected method view and actually actually stopping the the user from using the API if he is not logged in so, once we have our method view, we have a blueprint. Blueprint tells us uh, yeah, blueprint tells us uh, how how our our uh, API the okay, how to explain this? Basically, when when you see this this pass here that that we use, uh, what we are doing is using our blueprint. We are creating a new blueprint and we are creating a route for our our uh, blog in this case. And let's see what. Okay, we don't have here a user. Let's see an implementation of. Freenet, let's see, user. If you see here, this is a little bit, this is a full implementation of, of the user side, basically, of this. And if you see, we have a blueprint users. We have, we are using the, as a descriptor, we are using the blueprint to create a route which translates to. to this part uh, which translates to, to this part of URL but base blueprint does it uh, puts our uh, our, uh, our endpoint and slash API slash version and slash as you see here the base blueprint users and after that, we can append some more, as you see here, user ID, which we are using here. That's a variable that we are we are gonna use to actually uh, get user details. We will. I'm I'm confusing you maybe currently. Uh, once once we get into the implementation of things, it, it you will get a little a better hang of it. Uh, best way to, to to learn this is to learn by doing uh, just just talking about it, it it can be quite confusing so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this this 
uh, finite implementation and go back to our blog. Well, just a second. Oh, okay. My first blog. And my first blog and API. Okay. So, Blueprint is basically our path. Blueprint route is if we want it, actually this needs to be like this because it's a descriptor for this class. What descriptor does, it's just a wrapper in Python around the class so it... The class does all these things plus it has some more additional stuff added to it like a blueprint route you can you can read more about about descriptors that's basic python and okay so when we create our api endpoint we create a class we we give it a name this is a blog list api uh, we named it blog list api because it's gonna give us functionality of creating blog posts, uh, deleting blog posts, listing blog posts and stuff like that. Basically what we are gonna do it do with blog posts and it's blog list of posts. It it's it's a name like like any other. Uh, when we create that class we are using method view. We want everyone to be able to create a blog post at this point in time. In the future, we, we will probably change it so we can uh, we can create only a logged in user can, can create a blog post and we can assign that blog post to the user and to his profile, to his page. Uh, then inside the class that we create, we create functions that do uh, work, that, that do stuff that we need to do. If you can see here, we have no, no, uh, we are doing nothing. Why? Because we don't, we are not gonna do any functionality today. We are just gonna take a look how to create an em empty API. Uh, we have some arguments inside, inside the, that function that we are gonna take. Now, this part here, this, equals and closed parentheses the those quickly ones is something you don't do i did it only for this workshop it should be like this i did it for this workshop for this this uh, stage of the workshop only when we send no data which we are gonna prevent in the future for now we are gonna leave it at, at this when we send no data so we don't get an error we get just return the, those same arguments I, I mean we can take a look what what would happen when there is nothing let's just take a look at the error it's i believe errors are quite good for learning now this part is a special comment kind of thing that we are using here, as you see, this, this, uh, this piece of string here that uh, describes our our API. That's actually that piece of string here, and then after that we do our. It's not print f in Python, do it. <laughs> it's print. Then we do stuff. We can we can do and do something like this, and that's perfectly valid. But we are not gonna calculate our we are not gonna calculate two plus two. Uh, I mean we can, but uh, we're not gonna. Now we have created the schema. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking ahead, I'm sorry. Now, this is our blog post. 
not our our API for creating blog posts and now we have the file and when we take a look here there is nowhere that we can find that now why is that we will take a look just at the moment I I didn't I didn't add in this part in, on purpose so we can so we can take a look together because this editing of this kinds of files we're gonna do through our whole workshop and you don't add uh, you, you will be able to follow and you don't add uh, a, a API endpoint every day so I guess you want to do that on the video so you can actually follow go back take take a look and stuff like that so if you take a look in the API directory let's clear this like that if you take a look at the API directory we have our blog.py that is the file we just looked at and we have init.py you will see init.py in a lot of directories but in this directory it's quite important for us in other directories there's there's probably a chance that you will never need to edit them but in this one you definitely will why when you take a look here we need to register our endpoint uh, not just create it uh, when we create that point this is the function that's when we run the app it's gonna create our API API endpoints we have the default ones that Freenit gives us and now all the custom ones we need to tell Freenit okay I want these ones to to be able to to be used so I'm just gonna pretty pretty up this thing like this and all we need to do wait let's let's not skip over the steps so we do something like this from blog import blog I believe I did I didn't make a mistake yeah from blog import blog and now when we actually add a blog here we will see if okay there is there is an error no module name blog yeah makes sense because I'm I'm making a mistake uh, 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 just give me a second I'm, I'm quite forgetful on I'm quite forgetful on the format on how we how we actually how we actually add this as I said you don't do this every day and I'm a little bit rusty so just give me a second oh I'm, I'm first of all this needs to go inside this the inside this function because we don't need to implement in we don't need to import it import it all the time all the time and I'm missing this because we have created the blueprint to actually to actually add the path that we want to and this is we are now importing that blueprint that is gonna give us paths that we want to if that makes sense so basically blueprint what it does for us is routing and we are now importing the blueprint we created to actually uh, register that routing and now let's kill this and start it again just to see if I if everything runs correctly or if I made another mistake and as far as I can see there are no er errors here and we can try and refresh oh look what we have we have a new new uh, block that has an API on, on blocks it takes no parameters and it does nothing and you can try it out 
we click execute and it gave us nothing perfect now maybe that now doesn't make sense I will explain this in a second maybe that doesn't make sense it will but now we learned how to create a new API endpoint now what happens here I click execute we take a look here there's some some stuff here but what happens when you take a look and read it important line is we are missing position like argument arcs now we go back in here and we take a look at log.py and if you see here we have our uh, arcs as argument and we are returning it but we are never actually sending this and that's why it is crashing and that is the reason that is the reason why I added I added a default value here so now when we save it it reloads as you can see and let's do a reload here now when we try it out and execute it you see here we have no errors it handled a request and it did nothing because by by doing this i i said okay if you don't have our args uh, arguments basically okay consider it uh, they are this and empty nothingness but now I'm gonna delete this because in the future we will I'm not gonna leave pointless bits of code that to, well, one day or another we are gonna delete so let's keep it how it should be we we are gonna use schemas to to always have uh, some kind of data to work with because we never want empty arguments it makes no sense and you then you don't know what to do with that request now let's take a look at schemas also here I created a file also called blog.py uh, what happens is most of the time you have if I do something like this yeah yeah okay fish fish remembers stuff I don't uh, if you take a look here at this structure we have usually the API the schema and the model for the same for this uh, as as the same name only different directory why is that well for the I, I know only let's do a little bit of googling we take a look here now this can I do something like this okay now wh why is that well we have endpoint the routing thing the class inside the blog we just created what happens now is okay this is a little bit confusing but never mind uh, it, it serves my my point we have the blog part that that uh, the API part that's blog.py we have the schema part that's blog that also uses blog.py we will see in a second how how that works and we have the model part and the database part that also uses blog.py so uh, what what happens is you have API endpoint you have schema and you have a model in the database uh, all for the same same entity and that is that is why we have this structure we have a blog.py as a file for every part of this or, or API model and schema if I, I believe that that makes sense once we once we actually create the the model and do some functionality you will see why why are we doing things like this what I wanted to say is we are keeping the same file names uh, so we know 
which part of the code works with, with which part of the code, if, if that makes sense. Once once we have multiple API endpoints, multiple functionalities, it can be confusing if this is called a blog.py and this is called uh, request.py or something. We don't know what what needs what. And this is quite nice structure separated like this and you always know the name. Okay, I'm 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 I have started to ramble a bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to rambling what we actually need. And that is our schemas. Now we take a look at the blog.py schema. Now what Freinet does for us, it creates a base schema. Base schema is a schema that most of our, our schemas are gonna uh, are gonna how, how to say that in English uh, inherit most of our schemas are gonna inherit what it contains is an ID and this is then not needed because base schema actually does that for us it gives us an ID oh, why is that there okay uh, what gives us uh, is an ID for 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 our needs, and we add we add other other fields that that we are gonna use. Uh, now, to this is user schema. It's it's schema used for the user that Freenet implements. Where is the user? Here is the user, and. Okay, let's let's do something like this. Oops. No. Oh. Eh. Yeah, we have expired token. We are unauthorized, so we can't list all users. So let's log in again. I've been rambling enough so that we our session has expired. And then, 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 execute. Let me just check, are we online? Is everything okay? I believe it is. Okay, we are logged in again. Now let's try to list all the users again. And if you can see here, this is the part of user schema that Freenet implements whether user is active, is it admin, the time he's confirmed that, his email, his ID and he roles he is in. Now the part here you don't see is a password and stuff like that because we don't send that back and forth. We we have that as a creation schema where we when we create the user as you see, we sent here a password. It's a one-way ticket. It goes and never comes back because we don't want our password to be returned. Now, for for our purposes, we are make, creating a blog schema and we are using Marshmallow for help. It's Marshmallow is a library. We are going to take a look at what it does. Uh, for our blog what we need is our title basically who is the author of the of the blog and now I will explain all this after the content basically some text of of our of our blog and the date when the when the blog was created now what marshmallow does if you see here and we, if we go to hit their their uh, documentation, it gives us fields. Yeah, sounds sounds stupid. <laughs> it gives us fields. What fields are are uh, expected values that we can use inside our schema. Here is a list of uh, all the possible fields we can use. There's a boolean, there's an integer, there's an URL, 
there's time, there's float, actually there's bool and boolean and I, I've seen that and I still don't remember the difference uh, UUID, tuple, string, whatever. Now what that does is, so we don't have to worry about implementation. If you say, for example, okay, on this field and on this request, I want your current page. And a user does, what user does is writes, want to, uh, writes uh, ABC. Well, here, the marshmallow will say, oh, okay, wait, I can't use that, that's not, a, that's not an integer. I don't care about that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna approve of this API request. Now, let's see, do we have an example for this? This is just takes a string. A string is not the best example. It's not a good example at all, just for the reason it can contain anything. Well, I believe... Let's try it some like this. If we go here, and instead of user.example.com, we write this is not email. Let's see what's gonna happen, whether whether the marshmallow is gonna take a stand on it. Yeah, as you can see, not a valid email address. Why? Because Marshmallow says, oh, I expect email here. Uh, how, how, uh, how email is recognized. Usually it contains a NAT symbol, something, dot something. And when I send something like this, yes, we can't log in, but we no such user or wrong password, yes, but we sent the correct format for Marshmallow to accept. Now, when you are when you are creating something new, you have options of all this to, to use at your disposal, whatever you want. What, what also is one interesting field, I'm not sure if, yeah, here it is, nested. If you take a look at here, our author is fields.nested and nested gives us another schema that is user schema that Freenet implemented. So what we did here is something like, I'm gonna write here, we have author that is, that has his user id is user email is is it admin and stuff we already saw in the in here when we when we logged in on our on our successful login Let's refresh x mm, not when we logged in i'm sorry uh, when when we listed listed users, so this is our user schema, and when we have nested, we have this. Oops. Okay, it's a little bit clunky, but who cares? Yeah, something like this. So inside the author, and of course we have here our title and our content and our date. 21, great. Uh, that is what the nested field does. And when we send a request, we will take a look at it. We will see basically what I just wrote, but in practice and proper 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 response not just a mock-up now as i said fill string is just a string 
it takes anything we want and if you see here we have a title that description is when you go here uh, 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 uh. just give me a second to find some it, that description shows shows up somewhere I, I'm just not sure where from the top of my head we will take a look once we actually use the schema and it will show up and it will be much more clearer but it's just the description of that field we have this dump only part what this means is that because we use schema from backend to frontend and from frontend to backend and the author field is the, has the property of being dump only and what that means is from backend it can only be dumped to frontend we never expect from frontend to receive, receive uh, author because we are gonna recognize it when we have our user logged in we don't want someone to create a blog post as someone else and tell us okay I'm the author no when you are logged in we are gonna know who is the author that is what dump only does it's a one-way ticket but not from front to back it's from back to front uh, but uh, other 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 uh, fields are not dump only because when you go from front end to back end we want the title we want the content author we don't want and date also we don't want because no you, the user is not gonna tell me what date it is I mean if we want to we can allow him that we can allow him to tell us who's the author but on some on, when I was creating this happy endpoint I don't want I don't want user to tell me who's the author I want to find out who's the author because uh, default default mindset never trust the user trust your code you know how it works user is always gonna lie about something and write minus one where it's not needed and stuff like that or write one two three when uh, write ABC when you want his age or something like that yeah now again field string and we are using here a fields .date time, and we will see in future other other uh, usage of other fields during during our, our implementations now as you can see here we are using these schemas on all these API endpoints that they're showing up here and that's all nice and dandy but we created our blog post named, named them the same it's in the proper directory we managed to to get our our uh, our API showing in the swagger and be able to test it but there's nothing it takes nothing it does nothing we can't even send him any arguments because he doesn't know what to do with them doesn't know how to process them doesn't know what what's gonna happen and for that we go back into API and we open our block by now we have talked about descriptors that they encapsulate our code and add them something more to it and that is exactly what we are going to do with our with our uh, schema if you see here I have already imported schemas actually our blog schema that we just looked at and now what we are going to do is make a descriptor that's gonna take a blueprint response which is blog schema I did something weird yeah I opened it to win yeah something like this and we are gonna take a blueprint argument what this tells us is okay you have a second okay what this tells us okay when we because we talked about we have front end we have back end 
the argument part is okay on this way from front end to back end you're gonna use this schema you're gonna use this format to receive your message and it will be sent in this way to the back end and when you are re uh, retrieving when you are responding to that request from back end to front end you're gonna use response schema now what this gives us is we can uh, we can ask for for one parameters and we are returning something different so we can create another schema for a response and that's quite normal that's that's sometimes expected behavior uh, example when you Uh, example when you log in you want username and password but you don't want to return username and password back you want to return you're logged in you're not logged in so that is one way one way schema and the other way you are using something different in, in this case and in this point in time for this API we are using the same ar uh, argument and the same response now I save this I take a look we have an error Blueprint has no object, has no attribute argument. Okay, I messed up something again. What did I mess up? Oh, okay. It's arguments. And yeah, let's let's kill it and start it again. It sometimes it, it just gets stuck, so you restart it and everything is okay. It's it happens. Okay, now now we have no error, and when we take a look here and refresh, go down. Okay, now ooh, we have something new. We have our title. We have our content. Now this this so now looks as something from up here. We created something different. Uh, title content. They expect a string. Uh, this is here. You can take a look at how how it would actually how it would look. What what we get what what we send what we get back and stuff like that you can you can dig around now and we try and we say my first title it's written like this i believe and this is some multi line comment i guess i am really trying okay <laughs> now this is what what our code expects and we hit execute it sent something it sent it to this url and the response was this now why the response was this and not not our admin and our creator our time and date and stuff like that well that's because we did that we just told him okay don't do anything just return args uh, in the future we are gonna we're not gonna just take something and return it back we are gonna implement this next week we are actually gonna create a blog post we are gonna talk about the database and we are gonna store the blog post we create inside the database now we took a look at the api we created something we sent it we received something back and i believe that is good enough for today as I said, we will we will work on this more. We will improve on this. As I said before, at the beginning, this is the URL that this code will reside, and all the code in the future will will be here. And yeah, as soon as soon as I'm finished streaming, I'm gonna upload this. But yeah I think that's it now for some end notes as you know I at least I hope you know Tilda is a free learning community all we do we do because we love it and we are 
we love to hang out in person we love to hold these workshops in person also online but we mainly started in person and now with all this with all this stuff it's kind of it's kind of hard and we are currently in in search for a new apartment and if you can it would be helpful we have recently opened our patreon and i think i got the url correct yes i did we recently opened our patreon for for helping us get back on our feet and helping us uh, find a new apartment and once once we do that i i'm quite sure the quality of all of these workshops will be will be improved because we can have a proper setup maybe with a whiteboard as we used to have and stuff like that which is much better so if you can spare some buck some dollar we will, we will be happy much obliged and yeah thank you very much for for listening and see you next week <laughs>